What is the area of square EDGF? We're given this triangle here with side lengths 39, 52, and a hypotenuse is 65, and we have a square inside of it. What is the area of the square? Well, let's get after it. Our square here, when we want to find the well, area of the square, we should really know what the side lengths are. We don't know what they are, but we know it's a square, so let's call them x. x, 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 x. All right. So let's get some labels. I want to know some angle measurements here. Well, not the exact measurement, but I need a label for it. But let's look at B, A, E, that angle here. Let's call that alpha. Well, if that is alpha, let's call this angle C, B, C, D of the big triangle here. Let's call that beta. All right, we have alpha and we have beta. Now, what do we know about our square here? Well, we have a right angle right there, not drawn to scale. That means this is also a right angle right here. Same thing here. We got a right angle on this side, okay? Well, alpha and beta on our big triangle, A, B, C, they have to be complementary angles, meaning they add up to 90 degrees. We already have a right angle here, so these two have to add up to 90 degrees, okay? Hopefully you can see where I'm going here. Well, if this angle's alpha and this is 90 degrees, then this angle alpha and angle A, F, E also has to add up with alpha to be 90 degrees. Well, that must be beta then. And we can do this actual process a lot. Same thing, right angle, beta, this little angle here must be alpha. Same idea now on the inside, this is a little tricky. Alpha, 90 degrees, this must be beta. Beta, 90 degrees, this must be alpha. Now, one of the things that's gonna be helpful for us here is we have now all these triangles inside and the large one that have alpha, beta, and then 90 degrees. Alpha, beta, 90, alpha, beta, 90. Meaning that all these triangles are similar. Now, so when I get to this stage, I like to go write them all out. So let's go write all the similar triangles in an order. Let's start with our angle. So we have our triangle. We'll start with alpha. So this is angle A to the right angle, B, and then to beta, C. That's going to be similar to triangle. Let's start with the alpha here. In this case, is point G. G to the 90 degrees, D, to then beta, C. Triangle, the next one, we go alpha, beta, uh, alpha, right angle, beta. So A, E, and F. It's similar, again, alpha, 90, beta, F, B, G. All right, so all of these triangles are similar. Now we won't necessarily use all of them to be similar to solve what we need, but we're gonna make some proportions here and get after it. Let's let side length DC equal the letter A as a length here. Let's make a little proportion here. So our proportion, what we have, we can say the side lengths of two similar triangles are proportion, so X over A, is going to be equal to, let's go proportion of values that we know from the large triangle. Okay, now let's make sure we get this lined up. We have triangle G, D, B, G, or D, G, D, C right here with A, B, C. So G, D is length of X. That's going to line up. That's from alpha to the right angle. Alpha to the right angle is 39. Over D to C, which we said was A, which is the other leg. So that's going to be right angle to Beta, 52. Now luckily for us, 39 over 52 simplifies to be a 3 fourths. So we have x over a equals 3 fourths. Cross multiply for x equals a 3a. And I want to get a by itself, that length in terms of x. So a is equal to a 4 thirds x. So let's do the same thing now, but with side length a e. Let's call that B for opposite of beta, all right? So we'll set up again a proportion here. I have B over X, that triangle A, E, F, alpha to right angle, right angle to beta, so beta over X, or B over X here. So alpha to right angle is 39 over beta, uh, B to C, um, 
or right angle to beta, which is 52. Again, we said that is equal to 3 fourths, so B over X equals a 3 fourths. Multiply that out, we have a 4B equals a 3X. We divide both sides by a 4, and B is equal to a 3 fourths of an X value. Now, luckily for us here now, we have B in terms of X, which is 3 fourths X, and A is 4 thirds X, and ED is equal to X, so if we add them all up, it should equal 65. So we have a 3 fourths X plus this X plus a 4 thirds X equals a 65. All right, I'm not gonna bore you with some little math here, but 3 fourths plus X plus one X plus a 4 thirds X gives me a 37 over 12 X, which is equal to 65. Multiply both sides by 12 over 37. And we have an X value here that is equal to 65 times 12 over a 37 is a fraction, 780 over 37, or approximately here. Well, actually, not approximate because it repeats. It's lovely when decimals do that. And that is a 21. 0.081, repeating right there, repeating. All right, so we have the value of X is 21.081 repeating, but we wanna find the area of the square. That's what we're looking here for. So let's go back to our fraction, 780 over a 37. Let's square that bad boy. And we get a good old, I'll just write the decimal value here, 4, 4, 4, point, Four one nine four one one nine eight, and that's a unit squared. You can see that right there. So the area of our inner square is four hundred forty one point four one one nine eight units squared. As always, here. Thanks for watching.